So in this segment of the tutorial, we're actually going to create our first presentation. And again, a uh, presentation is this collection of slides, and it's actually going to appear in our main slide library. But before I actually get started, I need you to understand um, a fundamental new change or a fundamental way that ProPresenter actually creates and lays out new presentations. And that is, we actually use templates. And templates are predefined layouts for a specific presentation. And by default, um, given that ProPresenter is primarily geared towards lyric uh, and media presentation, our, our default template is just um, a simple white text on a black background, like I've seen in all the uh, you've seen in all these slides that I've used thus far. But you can actually create templates in a number of different ways, and you can see a lot of them that I have um, in, loaded within here um, right now. So. You can actually, before you create your, presen uh, your, your presentation, you can choose a template uh, that you'd like to use for that presentation. Uh, in this case, just to keep it simple, I'm gonna, I'll start with a lower third template. And so now I can create a, temp uh, create a new presentation either by clicking on this icon in my toolbar or clicking on the new presentation button that exists within the library. Either one will do. And when I create a new presentation, it's immediately going to create a slide within that presentation with the, the text that I had originally chosen. Um, I can go into my editor either by right-clicking um, this or, or holding down the control key and clicking on the individual slide and selecting edit slide. I could also click on the editor button in the top of my toolbar, and that will go into the editor. So now that we're in the editor, um, all of my slide previews for the, uh, the slides that exist within my presentation are going to be shown in this column over here to the left. And then this is my editor, uh, my editing box um, in the center of the screen. So I can very quickly um, edit this text and just say, uh, for purposes of this, I'm actually just going to um, do a song everybody knows and loves. So I'm actually just going to do row, row, row your boat gently down the stream and then I'll create a new present or a new slide merrily merrily so this is a very very simple two slide song and uh, I can make any slide live in the editors by clicking on it and so I can actually go back and forth um, if I want to see these a little bit larger, I can actually just scale my interface appropriately so I can see the, the thumbnails of my slide however I might want them. So text is the basic element of, uh, of our presentation. But one thing I wanted to show you, that uh, for those that are familiar with ProPresenter 3, we had a global uh, margin preference. We no longer have that, uh, that global preference. Instead, each box, each text box has its own preferences. So I can actually move this text around on the screen however I want to. And you can see that my thumbnail is actually updating as I do that. I'll keep it in the center. Um, I can also resize this text box, uh, which is going to bring me to another element that we have in the, in the software, which is I can even add a new text box if I want to. So that's a very quick thing. I can just say hello uh, and, and resize this text box however I want to. Uh, the next editing option that we have is just an empty rectangle. And this rectangle can consist of any kind of color that we might want. And uh, we'll be building a more sophisticated slide here uh, in our next segment. And then we can add graphics and video and live video. I can show a ruler or not show a ruler. Uh, when I have multiple objects on the screen, I can actually affect how they uh, are layered by sending an object to the front or sending it to the back. And then over here on the right hand side, we have our object inspector. Um, these are just individual tools that are going to allow me to manipulate the properties of my document, of my slides, or of the objects that exist within my slides. So if I wanted to change, for example, the font of this particular presentation, uh, I can actually select this text and go into the font properties and change the font to some other font. And it will only affect this particular slide uh, unless I hit the Apply All button. And when I hit the Apply All button, it will take these same settings and make them live on all the other slides of that presentation. So <clears throat> this is a, a, a new interface. Um, it'll actually allow you to specify uh, things like um, an outline or a shadow some of the, the text options that I have here. 
obviously the font, um, whether it's bold, italics, or, or otherwise, I can change that. I can also uh, change the size within here, uh, an outline if I want to have a, an outline so I can actually set a, I'll do a one point outline and just to de demonstrate this, I'll make it bright pink so you can kind of see that. Actually, let me make it uh, two points. Not exactly what you'd want to do for your worship service, but good enough for our demonstrations here. Um, and then a new feature in Pro 4 is we have the ability to adjust the kerning, which is the spacing between my text. So I can actually bring that tighter, uh, as well as the letting. So I can actually increase the space between paragraphs by increasing that, or by even decreasing it and going even smaller. So, and, and that's only available in some some fonts, that letting option. So. Um, those are some of my, my text options. Uh, I can independently choose uh, the outline. And again, it's, it, it's not necessarily a global preference within ProPresenter 4 as it was in previous versions of ProPresenter. Um, I can also do things like set a shadow, um, line and fill colors for individual boxes, all kinds of fun things. And we're actually in our, um, in our if you look at the special slide segment, we're gonna dive in more deeply and do uh, some more manipulations with um, a number of these different elements. But as it stands now, uh, I've adjusted the font and all the different uh, settings that I have for this particular slide. And again, I can apply these settings to all of the slides that I have within my presentation. So they all have this pretty pink background or a pretty pink outline. And uh, that is the basics on creating a song. More than likely, however, this is gonna take too much time for you. And if you want, let me go ahead and change my my song title by coming over here in the library and uh, changing it to row, row, row your boat. Um, you'll notice that the icon for this song is is brown. And that's because it indicates that it's a dirty song, which is to say that there have been edits made to the song and it's not yet been saved. So I can very quickly save this by going under the file menu and saying save. Um, the command that I like to use most often is the save all command, which is actually going to save all of the creation. changes that I've um, made. To but more than likely, you want to uh, create slides use. more quickly. And you can do that. ProPresenter will support the creation of slides from a text file or from a song select account, um, as well as being able to copy the text of a song and uh, creating slides from that copied text. So for example, I'm actually just going to import a text file that I actually have available. And this is going to be Heart of Worship, a uh, song by Matt Redman. So, when I select to import this song, it's gonna allow me to import it just into the library. I can import it into the currently selected playlist, which in this case is my This Sunday Service playlist. Or I can create a new playlist for the importing of this, uh, this text slide. Also have the option to insert blank slides between the noted song sections. We actually do pay attention to the individual breaks within the song, such as chorus, verse, and that kind of thing. Uh, and then I can choose how I want this to be formatted, whether I want a single line return for every paragraph or for each slide, or whether I want the slide break to be done by a paragraph break. And then I can choose whatever template that I want to use when I import this, this slide. So I'll just use uh, everything that I've already chosen and I'll say continue. It's gonna ask me what the title for this song is and I'll just keep it as Heart of Worship. And by saying, okay, it's automatically going to bring it into my library. And here it is, Heart of Worship. So it brought it in using the template that I had chosen and um, laid it out with that lower third template that I had selected. So immediately I can click on these slides and make them live uh, to my audience. You'll notice that it's also labeled the individual parts of the song, chorus one, verse one, bridge. Uh, if I want to stylize this more, I can right click or hold down the control key and click on any individual slide and I can label it however I want to. So in this case, I can label the chorus and we actually have the ability to apply a color at the same time that we um, apply a label. So I'll change the color of this one, or I'm sorry, the label of this one to verse one and it changes the the, the bounding rectangle of this thumbnail to blue so that it calls out uh, the slide to the operator um, more easily. Um, another thing that I can actually do in when I'm actually presenting these slides is I can actually uh, make a slide live just by hitting the number of the slide. In this case, if I wanted to make, for example, slide four live, I could just type the number four and when I hit enter, it's going to make that slide live. Um, 
But if I, uh, what I like to do is actually take advantage of the hotkey function of ProPresenter. If I right click or control click on the uh, on any given slide, it'll bring up this contextual menu where I can actually say hotkey, and I can specify a specific keystroke to assign to this particular slide. So I'll use the letter C. And now, where, regardless of where I am in the presentation, as I'm going through this song, if I hit the letter C, it'll immediately make the chorus slide live. And then I can again use the arrow keys or what other, whatever other method, mouse, uh, what have you, to actually navigate through the song. So that's a, uh, a nice feature to have at the ready when you're creating the songs. But I showed you the uh, ability to uh, choose a template, and as you see, my song has been um, laid out with that lower third template. But let's say I wanted this to be uh, to use a different type of template. So this is actually a, a great new function of, of Pro 4 with these templates, is we can actually do global, global changes very, very quickly. So I can actually bring up this format menu, and I can actually apply uh, various things to the formatting of this song. And I have a certain number of defaults that have been selected here, um, but actually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that this is actually going to center the text in the middle of the screen, so I can do that just by clicking on that button that indicates the, the middle of the screen, or I can change the alignment to be left align, or center align, or right align. I'll keep it in the center. If I want to make this, this font a little bit larger, I can uh, set that, and now we're at a 72 point. I'll change the font to what I had selected here. So this is just a, uh, an easy way to apply a number of different changes to the selected presentation. And if I wanted to affect all of them, again, these are kind of defaults uh, that have been selected here. I can just say apply all, and that will apply all of these different settings to the slides of my presentation. And this is if I want to make a global setting change without actually changing the template. Um, so that's this is a function that existed within ProPresenter version 3. Um, now with templates, I can actually do these changes much more easily because I can predefine the look of these individual slides. And now I can do what's, uh, what's called refactoring to these individual slides. So I can actually apply a template to a presentation that has already been laid out. And I do that by clicking on the Apply Template button. And I will actually choose from our sample templates, I'll choose a lower third uh, with a background box. And you see how all of my slides have instantly been reformatted to this new template that I've cho chosen. I'll choose a different one just so you can see how this works. I'll choose a left align, lower third. Uh, here I have an example of a left align that builds from the top. So all the text is retained, it's just using the same font that I've chosen for the template and any other elements that might exist on the slide. So that's a very, very powerful new function with regards to uh, both creating slides as well as editing and manipulating um, your slides. And again, we can bring in these, uh, these slides uh, using song select, um, copied text, uh, any of a number of different ways, and we will cover those alternate ways. If you look at the song select tutorial, we can walk you through that portion at that time. So that's the basics of creating and editing uh, your songs. So now that you know the basics of editing the song, uh, I want to talk to you about some edits that you can actually make within this presenter view where you're actually seeing all the slides in this, in this kind of grid format. Now, in prior versions of ProPresenter, and it continues in this version, you can actually move slides around by holding down the command key and just clicking and dragging the slide wherever you want it to go. So by uh, holding down the command key and dragging, you see that it actually gives an insertion bar, which is indicated by that aqua looking line that appears between the individual slides. When I let go, that's actually going to move that slide from its original spot down to the middle of the song. We, uh, and I just did an undo to undo that function. We have a new function within ProPresenter, however, which is this lock and unlock function. You can see as I hold down the command key, this lock changes from a locked padlock to an unlocked padlock. By turning this on, I'm now in a safe mode. So clicking on individual slides is not going to affect anything that's actually going out to my audience. And this is sort of an edit mode, so I can, without having to hold down any kind of command key or otherwise, I can just take and drag slides around however I want to. Uh, I can actually select multiple slides 
by holding down the command key or holding down the shift key um, and then move a group of slides or copy and paste slides. At this point, when you're in this unlocked mode, it kind of becomes like a text editor where I can actually uh, select, copy a group of slides, maybe go to the end of the song and then paste them at the end of the song. And you see that that's pasted all those slides at the end of the, of the song. So this is a nice little addition, um, just allows you to do these edits within this grid view so you're actually seeing all of the slides of the song and uh, you can move slides around that way.